Well, so there's so much talk about the present moment and being present in the power of now, but um, most people, um, they spend the majority of their life, uh, 95% of the time, either living by some past emotion or some past habit or anticipating the future based on the past. And so we're very rarely in the present moment and, and paying attention is being present. And it's a skill just like anything else. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. So think about it. The feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences. And you can remember experiences better because you can remember how they feel. If you wake up in the morning and you have to search for the familiar feeling called you every morning and, and that feeling is unhappiness or frustration or lack or insecurity or fear, the moment you get in touch with that emotion, you're starting your day from the past because the emotion is a record of the past. Now, if that emotion is connected to memories that are mapped neurologically in your brain of certain people at certain places at certain times with certain things, then the moment you feel that emotion, you associate that emotion with the past memory, then you're activating circuits in your brain from the past. So if how you think and how you feel creates your state of being and thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain and feelings are the vocabulary of your body, then your entire state of being is in the past and most people are living in the past. So their body is their unconscious mind and it doesn't know the difference between an experience in their life that creates an emotion and an emotion that they're creating by thought alone. To the body, it's exactly the same. So those emotions start driving people's thoughts. And if they can't think greater than how they feel, and feelings have become the means of thinking, and they believe that their thoughts have something to do with their destiny, then they're thinking in the past. So they're creating more of the same life. And by the same means, if they wake up in the morning and they come back to their senses and they start out with the same routine that they did yesterday, and they're going through a series of routine habits of going to the toilet, making coffee, eating breakfast, taking a shower, driving the work the same way, then we could say for the most part, a person's future is nothing more than a replication of the past and they're not in the present moment. And if they keep doing that over and over again, that becomes a habit. And a habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that's acquired through frequent repetition. A habit is when you've done something so many times, the body has become the mind. So for most people, their body is dragging them into a predictable future and they're on autopilot based on what they've done in the past and they've lost their free will to a program. So then teaching people then mm -hmm. how to keep their attention in the present moment and take their attention off their body, take their attention off of people in their life, take their attention off of things they own or objects they possess, places they have to go, and even time itself is the act of becoming pure consciousness. And that's when we begin to disengage from the emotions of the body in the past and the habituations of the body living in the future based on the past. And so that process then, think about it. The stronger the emotion you have, the more you pay attention to what you think is causing it. So if you feel fear, and in antiquity, if you're being chased by a predator, the moment you feel fear, you're thinking about that predator because you need to keep it on your mind. So now what if it's not a predator, but what if it's your coworker? What if it's your boss? What if it's your ex? And the stronger the emotion you feel for those people, the more you're keeping your mind and your attention on them. Mm -hmm. So then if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, then you're giving your power away to that person or that thing. And if you got a lot of those things and objects and people, and your attention is shifting from one person to another person to another problem to another thing, we could say then that your attention and your energy is divided. And you don't really have any energy for healing, any energy to create a new life, any energy for a mystical moment. So then breaking that association and being in the present moment requires you becoming conscious of when you're feeling guilty or feeling insecure. And the moment you start noticing it, you settle your body back down into the present moment, relax, and turn back up into that in unlimited field of possibilities. And well, the moment you start noticing, thinking about how long have I gone? How much time is this going to go? What do I have to do today? Who do I have to see? What meeting do I have? 
that the act of putting your attention in the predictable future based on what you did in the past and returning back to the present moment is disinvesting your energy out of the known and making room for the unknown in your life. And, and just like training an animal, Michael, the more you do this, <laughs> the more you're able to settle down the brain and the body into the present moment. And now you're building your own electromagnetic field as you break the bonds energetically with everyone and everything in your life and you keep your attention off the person that you think is causing that emotional reaction then you're disinvesting your energy out of your past present reality and now you have the available energy to begin to change and we've measured this and people's energy fields get more uh, broadened their brain becomes more coherent the heart becomes more coherent they have significant changes in their health uh, just as a result of finding the sweet spot of the generous present moment most people uh, they have experiences in their life that brand them emotionally and um, or a series of experiences that replicate the same emotion and they start believing that they're their emotions and they're not so if those emotions are driving their thoughts and they can't mm -hmm. think greater than how they feel then they're thinking in the past so then the moment they turn on a set of circuits in their brain to produce a level of mind they all of a sudden generate more emotions and chemicals equal to how they were just thinking. So if they're feeling insecure and they start thinking insecure thoughts, the moment they get enough circuits firing, they'll make more chemicals for them to feel insecure. And then they feel more insecure, then they'll think more insecure thoughts. And the moment they turn on those insecure thoughts, they'll feel more of those emotions. And the repetition of that loop of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking over time conditions the body to become the mind of that emotion. So now, not only they can't think greater than how they feel, but they can't think greater than their body. And so their body literally has been conditioned to become the mind of that emotion, then the body literally is in the past. So then teaching people how to get beyond their body <laughs> is the act of being in the present moment as well. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't respect your body or you shouldn't honor it or acknowledge it. But when it comes time to change, you have to get beyond the very aspect of the self that keeps you connected to the past in order to create a new future. Well, um, everything in this universe is emitting light and information. That everything material has a field around it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's energy. And our bodies are made of atoms and atoms make molecules and molecules make chemicals and chemicals make cells and cells make mm -hmm. tissues and tissues make organs and organs make systems and systems make up the body. So we're emitting energy and light all the time. Now, we lose that energy or we mismanage that energy when we turn on that fight or flight nervous system or the stress response. So the moment we start becoming stressful and we react, our, in antiquity, we reacted to conditions in our environment. We have to draw from the body's research sources and turn it into chemistry. So the act of reacting with fear or aggression or sadness or pain or whatever, we're literally tapping the body's vital energy and turning it into chemistry. And the field around the body begins to shrink. When that happens, we become more matter and less energy, more particle and less wave. Now we're diminishing our light field. So then how do we build our own life field? Well, yep. in fact, as we begin to lower the volume to those emotions and keep our attention off the cause of it, and we begin to settle back down into the present moment, if we keep doing that, energy is liberated from the body. Now that energy that's stored in the body is being released, and now we become more energy and less matter, more wave and less particle, and the body starting to liberate more light and information. And now that's the available energy that we begin to build to, to create a new life and, and to heal ourselves.